Hello and welcome, I'm your CodeMonkey. Here's a ton of tools that can help you make multiplayer games really easily. Basically, with the help of these tools, you can build a really nice multiplayer platformer like Cuphead, or build an awesome open world multiplayer game like V-Rising. You can build an epic co-op adventure crafting RPG just like Valheim, or maybe an intense online first-person shooter like Escape from Tarkov. You can build a really awesome experience that takes over the world like Among Us, or some fun chaos with your friends like in Overcooked. By the way, all of these games, these are all made with Unity. And thanks to all of these awesome tools, you too can build multiplayer games just like these as well. Now, if you just started making games recently, then you have no idea how difficult things used to be. I've been making games for over 10 years. I started making Flash games all the way back in 2008. And back then, I did the same mistake as pretty much everyone else. For my third Flash game, I suddenly had the brilliant idea of why don't I try making a massive open world MMO. I worked on that idea for several months and obviously ended up quitting it. One big reason why was because I had to do all of the multiplayer from scratch. Meaning I had to work with some basic sockets and send individual bytes for every single action in the game. Same thing for when I added multiplayer to my first team game made with Unity. So it was a nightmare, things were really difficult back then. But thankfully nowadays you don't have to suffer like I did. I just recently released my latest game, Dinky Guardians, which does have multiplayer support. And the whole reason why I decided to make a multiplayer game after suffering so much from the past was simply because of how easy it is nowadays thanks to all of these awesome tools. And it's not just easy, the tools that I'm going to mention are either completely free, like for example Netcode for Game Objects, or even the ones like Relay have some very generous free tiers. I launched my game this month and I still did not go past the free limits. So here's a list of all of the awesome multiplayer related tools that can help make your multiplayer games a reality. Unity sponsored this video for me to go over each one of these tools one by one to see what they do and how they can help you. There's also a link in the description where you can get started with Unity Gaming Services. And I also have my free multiplayer course, which uses several of the tools that we're going to talk about to make a really nice multiplayer game. Also, one very important thing is how all of these tools are modular. You don't have to use them all. You can use only the ones that you need and mix them to fit your particular use case. Okay, so from this list, let's start with Netcode for Game Objects. This is the main multiplayer tool, meaning it's how you actually send data to sync things in your game. Things like player position, when a player scores a point or gains some EXP or anything. For example, in my game, I'm using Netcode for Game Object to synchronize the player position as well as all of the other objects. I can synchronize when a building is placed, which world to load, when a player or a machine picks up something, and so on. With Netcode for Game Objects, you can just use simple components like the network transform, which will automatically sync the object's transform component. So there's no need for you to deal with low level bytes or anything like that. It's all nicely abstracted away into simple components and functions that make it really easy to use. In order to synchronize a player, you just create a network manager, you set up the transport, add a network transform to your player, and that's it. Just with that, you have a connection and a transform being synchronized across the network. So you can literally have a multiplayer Unity game fully working in under 60 seconds. This is what I mean when I say that it's so easy nowadays. Then of course, you have tons of ways to synchronize your data. Using the built-in components is the simplest way, but then you also have network variables, you have RPCs, network animators, you can play around with client versus server auth and so on. If you want to learn about it in detail, then check out my really in-depth tutorial where I go over pretty much everything you need to know about Netcode for Game Objects. Now, this tool, this one is primarily meant for small-scale co-op games, meaning games like Overcooked or Ship of Fools, so games more for fun and with a few players. But for competitive games with super fast gameplay, for that you have Netcode for Entities. Like the name implies, this is the networking library that is made with Unity Dots, if you need hundreds of players and super fast Twitch action, then this is the networking tool you want to use. It is extremely fast and extremely capable. This one is server authoritative by default, which helps prevent cheaters. It also includes client-side prediction, which is an absolute must in some really intense games. Since it's using dots, it is actually insanely performant and everything is separated in a really nice way. All of the server logic runs in a separate dots world. This is extremely useful during development, there's no need to make a separate build. You can run both the player world and the dot server world, both of them at the same time. This tool naturally requires some knowledge of dots, but in terms of capabilities, it is definitely unmatched. Also, one quick note, remember how when it comes to dots, you don't need to go full dots or full game objects, you can actually mix them both. So you can have a game where most of the logic and rendering, most of that is done using regular game objects, so pretty much the same way you've always built your games. And basically, the only thing that is using dots is the high-speed networking connection. So always remember you have those options, you don't have to go full dots. You can download and try out the Dots Mega City sample. This one is a fully working game with over 64 players, tons of objects and actions, all of it working seamlessly with super fast connections. Then, regardless of which one of those networking tools you want to use, once you have your game with multiplayer logic working, then you need some way to connect your players. 
And for that, there are two Unity tools to help you. To host your servers, you can use either dedicated servers or you can have the players host themselves. The best option really depends on your use case. Usually for super fast-paced competitive games, for that kind of game, you really want to use a dedicated server. But for co-op games, like for example my own game, having the players host themselves works fine. So for these two use cases, Unity has two tools. If you want the players to host the servers themselves, you can try to just connect the players directly, but chances are you will actually encounter tons of issues related to firewalls and NAT, and the connection simply will not get through. So to help solve that, you have Relay. This is a tool that makes connections super simple by helping you avoid all the issues that come with firewalls and NAT. The Relay basically is just a server on the internet which acts as a middleman between your various players. The Relay is easily accessible by any player so it has no issues with connections, and the players are the ones that initiate the connection with the Relay, so even if a player is behind a super strict firewall, they can still connect to the game. And of course, Relay is very well integrated with Netcode for Game Objects, so it's really literally just one line of code to set it up. I made a dedicated video on it if you want to learn more, and I'm also using Relay in my own game. Then the other alternative, like I said, is to use dedicated servers. This one is a bit more tricky because you have to individually start and stop servers. You have to keep monitoring how many players you have to make sure you have enough servers. Basically, you never want to be in a situation where your game suddenly blows up and you can't handle all that traffic. And again, Unity has a great tool to help solve this. It's called Game Server Hosting and it does exactly that. It helps you manage your server infrastructure and automatically scales up or down depending on the band. By the way, this is actually the exact same tool that Apex Legends uses for their servers. So if it can handle a massive game like Apex, then it can certainly handle your game. I also have a dedicated tutorial on how to set up this tool. Basically, you make a server build, you upload it to the Unity dashboard, then define some settings and it will automatically create and dispose of servers depending on how many players you have. If you want to try out game server hosting for yourself, then Unity has a partnership with Google Cloud, who is the official cloud provider. Right now, you can get started with $800 worth of free credit. That's a great deal to help you try it out and see just how it performs for your game. Check out the link in the description for more details and get your free credit for game server hosting. This tool is also very well integrated with this next one, Matchmaker. This is Unity's matchmaking system. It's how you can match players with one another to get some really nice, satisfying and very fair matches for everyone involved. You define a bunch of rules for how your players should be matched together. You can make it based on location, make it based on skill, experience or really anything you want. You define various matchmaking pools and when a player wants to play a game, they simply get added to a pool. Then the system automatically uses the rules you define to match players with one another. And when enough players are matched together, then the matchmaker system automatically talks to the game server hosting tool and automatically starts a new server for those players. Then in terms of adding players to that matchmaking pool, you can either add them individually or you can also integrate that with this next tool, which is Lobby. This tool helps you create and manage player lobbies. So you can create a lobby, you can define all kinds of data for it, like for example, the max number of players, what is the current game mode, current map, and so on. Each player can also have its own custom data. So things like what character they have selected, what is their role, player name, skill points, and really anything you want. You can have lots of lobbies, either public or private. Players can join lobbies, they can search, browse, and so on. It's really a very useful tool for grouping your players together. Also, this tool works by itself or with either dedicated servers or player host servers, meaning it can work with either game server hosting or Relay. For example, in my own game, I am using Relay to connect the players, and I'm also using Lobby to group them together. The players join together in a lobby, then they press on ready, and the connection is established through Relay, and then the Netcode for Game Objects connection, that connection is actually started. But of course, like I said, all of these tools are modular, so you could also join your players together in lobby, then create a matchmaking ticket for all of those players, set up a dedicated server with game server hosting, and handle the networking with Netcode for Game Objects. Again, remember that all of these tools are modular. It's up to you to decide which ones best fit your game. Then, in a lot of multiplayer games, communication is key, and for that you have Vvox. This is the tool that helps simplify adding both text and voice chat to your games. Again, this is yet another battle-tested tool. It's already been used by Rainbow Six Siege and Valorant to handle their voice chatting, so it's already an extremely capable, very robust tool. You have voice chat like in various team games, meaning you can have separate channels where your players can talk to one another. Alternatively, you can also use it for 3D positional audio, meaning players can only talk and hear players that are nearby. This one is super useful for games like MMOs or simply some large open world multiplayer games where you really only want your players to be able to hear nearby players. It also supports text chat, super easy to let your players chat with one another. 
It has all the features you expect, like push to talk, volume management, muting, and so on. And it also works cross-platform, meaning you can voice chat between a player on a PC and a player on mobile. Related to that is another super useful tool that is currently in beta called Safe Voice. This one lets you analyze voice chat in your game to identify and deal with toxicity. This is one of those problems that can very easily destroy an entire community. Just a couple of bad actors is going to be enough to destroy your game. So this tool helps solve that. It uses AI to identify potentially disruptive behavior, which you can then deal with. Now, when it comes to all of these multiplayer tools, you need some way to authenticate your player so you know who is who. For that, you can use Unity Authentication. This one supports a ton of login methods. You can use any of these that you want, like Google or Steam. You can use any OpenID Connect protocol. And of course, on consoles, it also supports their specific Xbox or PlayStation logins. That tool helps you assign a unique ID for each player. And then something that uses authentication for a great use is this next tool, which is Friends. It helps you keep track of all of your players and create some friend lists. Again, one of the main benefits of this tool is how it's multi-platform. So you can have some players play on PC and then add an Xbox player to their friend list. With a friend list, you can then easily create friend invites to let friends easily join your multiplayer matches. Another great and simple tool is leaderboards. This one does exactly what it says. It helps you very easily set up leaderboards for your games. You can add scores, you can remove them, you can see scores for all of your friends, create multiple leaderboards for different game modes, different maps, and so on. All super easy to use with the built-in package. And one tool that is not limited to just multiplayer, but extremely useful in really any game is analytics. This is how you can track and analyze literally anything in your game. It's up to you as a developer to decide what data would be useful to help you make the game the best it can be. So for example, in my own game, I used analytics to track the tutorial completion rate. Using this data from the demo build, it helped me see where players were getting stuck. So based on that, I added a bunch of improvements which made the game much better for the final version. You can track all kinds of events, add any metadata that you want. You can create funnels, analyze the data in a million ways. You can view player retention, average playtime, and stuns more stats. This is really one of those tools where you can go really deep if you want. But if you just take a few minutes to implement the absolute basics, just that will help you make your game much better. So with all of these tools, making multiplayer games has really never been easier. Check out the link in the description to get started making multiplayer games. Make sure you grab the free credit for game server hosting to try it out. And if you want a step-by-step -step guide, then check out my free multiplayer course. In there, I use Netcode for Game Objects coupled with Lobby and Relay to make a really nice multiplayer game. That game itself was actually the base upon which I built my Steam game, Dinky Gardens. I hope that with all of these tools, you too can make your multiplayer dreams a reality. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.